Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to episode 28 of uh, Opening Basics. In this video we're going to uh, finish up our look at the uh, Four Knights game. And uh, we're nearing the end actually of the whole E4, E5 series. I was going to take a look after this, after the Four Knights, I was going to take a look at the Ponziani opening in one video and then uh, take a look at the uh, Mueller attack, which I looked at once before. So this will be the Mueller attack uh, revisited. That's a line in the Italian game. And then I'll be through with the uh, E4, E5 opening. So uh, that's what you have to look forward to. But let's uh, finish up the four knights here. E4, E5, knight of three attacking the E pawn, knight C6 defending. And now knight C3 introduces the four knights. And um, the main move for black here is knight to F6. And that's because it really is the best move. Um, there's pretty good responses that white has in in, uh, in reply to everything else. For example, if uh, bishop to b4 is played trying to pin this knight, there's no pin <laughs> because the uh, the pawn here is uh, blocking that. So the knight can move, and knight to d5 is a good answer, uh, immediately kicking the bishop, assuming that black doesn't want to uh, give up the bishop pair. So... Um, other moves like uh, knight to, or bishop to c5, which is sometimes an idea, in this case can be met by the uh, center fork trick. This is a, a good a good opportunity to play that uh, tactic, where you play the pawn to d4 and fork those two pieces, and uh, white ends up in a good position out of that. And if uh, black plays something quiet here, like um, g6, then you can play d4 immediately. Um, just uh, gaining more space in the center and opening things up when you have a little bit of an edge and development easier lines for your bishops. So um, all that is good for white. So the most challenging response after knight c3 is uh, knight f6, and that's how we get it to the four knights. Now, in the last video, I looked at uh, bishop to c4, the, uh, <coughs> the Italian four knights, or uh, d4, the uh, Scotch four knights, um, and other lines. Uh, in this one, we're taking a look at bishop to b5, the Spanish four knights, uh, named after its similarity to the uh, Spanish game or the Rui Lopez. But, uh, well, there are differences because of these extra moves that have been inserted with the two knights coming out. Now, the uh, old main way of playing this, well, first of all, black can play this in a quiet fashion, like uh, with d6, playing it sort of like the Steinitz variation, keeping this uh, bishop imprisoned behind the pawn chain. Um, it's a solid way to play, but uh, nothing nothing too great, and uh, white gets some pressure. Um, the old way of playing this, this is popular at the beginning of the 20th century, was uh, bishop to b4, and just going into kind of a symmetrical setup here. Uh, white would castle, black would castle. Um, like plays d3, just shoring up the center. One difference with the Rui Lopez is you don't have this move c3 to build up a d4 because the knight is in the way. Um, d6 and uh, bishop to g5. And now is a good time. Uh, also, this move could have been played earlier, um, but now is a good time for the bishop to take on c3. Or this is the most popular point at which the bishop can take on c3. And we get this kind of position where, um, well, let's see, black plays queen e7 and. Uh, White plays rookie one. The idea is to hold on to the e pawn so that you can push the d pawn forward. White's going to try and build up a big center. He's going to try and make use of the open file and the open lines for his bishops. Um, Black has a solid setup and uh, an a, a unblemished pawn structure. He has a, a pawn structure with no weaknesses. So, uh, but he's a little bit cramped for space. So, all in all, this uh, position is considered to be a little bit uh, too. Uh, to white's advantage. Uh, black does have an interesting maneuver here, though, if you want to try it sometime. Knight to e8 to uh, d8 to e6 is an idea in this position for black. Um, <clears throat> anyway, that's all I wanted to say about that. That is not played so much these days because of uh, a move that uh, Rubenstein discovered, uh, again, back in the early part of the 20th century. And it was after this that the four knights can kind of uh, went out of favor. And uh, and people switched over to the Rui Lopez as uh, as White's best try in the e4e5 uh, openings for an advantage. Um, and that's the move knight to d4. So this is a very interesting move. It looks at first like it's a uh, pawn sack, but uh, it's not a pawn sack, at least not right away, um, although it can lead to a pawn sack and, and does, in fact, in most lines. But uh, first, if 
um, if white takes immediately, then queen e7 is a good answer. Hitting the knight and then threatening the pawn behind it. After the knight retreats, uh, we just have knight takes. Uh, so after knight f3, we have knight takes here. Although, um, let's let's say this right. If it, the knight goes to f3, yeah, the best move is to grab the bishop over here first, resolve this issue, and distract distract this knight away. And then you can take here with check. So that's that's the most accurate way to play that. Um, so white usually tries to hold on to things by playing f4 here. Now you can take the bishop off once again. And then play uh, d6 to kick this knight back. And after the knight drops back, you once again have this queen e4 check. And uh, leads to quite a comfortable position for black. Either the king has to move or, um, or white has to uh, block with the queen and you can... Uh, trade queens and take away white's castling privileges. And so uh, black is doing fine in those lines. So that's why uh, taking <coughs> taking right away isn't, isn't the most uh, challenging move. Um, but what white can do, let's see. The, the top move, I guess, is bishop a4. Let's look at one other move first, though, because I think that's kind of interesting. So taking the pawn, a lot of times uh, white will take the knight. And, uh, and now you take back with the pawn. The pawn is hitting this knight, but the bishop has been preserved this way. So the um, so white has not had to give up the bishop here in this line. And uh, he has this interesting try for an advantage here with the move e5. Um, and now after these trades, pawn takes, pawn takes, queen takes, pawn takes. We get this uh, open position. Um, if white, I mean if black, if black is ready to settle for a, a draw, he can get a very even position by the move queen to e5 check here, which uh, forces, well, I don't know. I, I can't say it forces that. It, um, after the check, uh, white can block with either the queen or the bishop. And if he blocks with the queen, then you can trade queens and get a very even end game. Um, or if uh, white wants to play on, he can uh, block with the bishop. And uh, this this is also about an even position. You have this uh, pin here on the uh, light squared bishop. The dark squared bishop or the pawns might come out to harass the queen eventually, but uh, in the meantime, um, black has time to develop a piece. Let's see, bishop to c5 probably makes the most sense, and both sides can castle. And uh, play will continue from there. It's about an even position. So uh, it's okay. Maybe a slight edge for white still, if you believe the chess engine. But uh, seems like a, an okay way to play. Um, after e5, you could also try, um, I mean, instead of e5, you could also try knight to d5. But this also leads to nothing very much after knight takes, e takes. We get we get a very even position again. So um, that's knight takes, knight takes e5. Probably with the idea of pushing on with uh, pawn to e5 after that is an interesting way for white to play. But, uh, well, now let's take a look at the main line move, and that is bishop to a4. So let's let's back up just in case you're getting confused about where we are. So it's knight to uh, f6 going into the four knights. It's bishop to b5 selecting the Spanish four knights, and then knight to d4 immediately hitting the bishop. And this is the Rubenstein variation. So uh, best for white here is not to take the pawn immediately, but to drop the bishop back. And what this does, it keeps a pin on the d pawn, so that um, this e pawn is not so easy to protect here. And in fact, at this point, this does turn into a gambit. But uh, it just turns out it's one of those gambits that's uh, pretty good for um, for black. So let's see. The main move here is, uh, well, there's two main moves. One of them is c6, just blocking that bishop and preparing to either play uh, d6 or d5, depending on the circumstances. But now this ready to defend this pawn. So if, uh, if white wants to grab the material, he has to grab it now. And that, that's probably the best move here. And then you've got either uh, d6 to kick the knight or uh, d5. Let's see, I think uh, both of them are played, but d6 is a little more popular. Kicking the knight back to f3 and then um, bringing the bishop out, bishop to g4. You see that uh, black stays a pawn down for a little bit, but he gets uh, a lot of activity for his pieces. Um, white's going to hold on to that pawn by playing uh, d3 here, try and shore things up. And, uh, you know, there's these threats on this uh, pin knight here. 
Um, although uh, Black doesn't uh, cash in on those threats immediately, but uh, pushes forward in the center with d5. So that's uh, one way to play, leading to interesting play for Black, and it looks like uh, compensation for the pawn. Um, the other way to play, let's see, that's after knight d4, the Rubenstein move, bishop to a4, the main move. Um, the other way to play besides uh, c6 is uh, bishop to c5, just shoring up the knight here. And once again, uh, turning it into a gambit. So this knight goes here, and not even kicking it, but uh, castling. And this starts to look dangerous because the rook on the e-file uh, and the king is not castled yet. Things could go wrong. Um, the main move for white here is knight to d3, trying to get off of the e-file with tempo. The bishop drops back to b6. It was hitting the loose bishop there. And now uh, white could play um, e5, kicking the knight once again, and driving the knight back to e8. And this looks funny because uh, it seems like white has gained a pawn and uh, has more pieces developed and has kind of pushed black's pieces back. But uh, while black is securely castled, and white's development is kind of tangled. I mean, these knights are sitting on these pawns, and the bishop is still behind the pawn wall here. This bishop on a4, it's not so clear what it's doing. Um, let's see. Black tries to unwind here, starting with the move knight to... Uh, white. White tries to unwind, unwind, starting with the move knight to d5. Cancel that. Knight to d5. Much more active move, uh, putting putting some pressure on the bishop there. And then the black goes for pressure, counter-pressure on the center with d6. And uh, as in the previous line, uh, black just continues to play on a pawn down. But now that the d pawn is out there, he always has ideas of grabbing this pawn, getting his uh, material back. Um, if white takes, he gets a uh, tempo of development with his pieces. And he just has uh, better pieces in this position. So uh, this turns out to be uh, good compensation for black for the pawn. So another interesting way to play. So for those reasons, I mean... Uh, I would not. If I was white, I wouldn't uh, be afraid of uh, those lines. It looks like they're interesting for white as well as black. But uh, and like I said, after the introduction of this uh, knight d4 move, uh, white players just felt like they couldn't couldn't get a, a secure edge that they were looking for. And so they went to other lines like the uh, the Rui Lopez really rose in popularity after that. So um, anyway, that wraps up my coverage of the four knights. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I'll be uh, back soon with the next episode. See you then. Bye.